Hello and welcome to another episode of the Known and Ever podcast. I'm your host Natalie Bromley and this week we are looking back over that narrower, narrowest defeats at home to Manchester United. A game that the Clarets dominated, played incredibly well but just couldn't find that finishing touch. So coming to 1-0 to um, a worldie of a goal, um, one that none of us really saw coming and none of us could really do anything about. The team are here to give us their thoughts on what could have been the Clarets' first win of the season. Let's go. Hi everyone, I hope you're well here, Rich Steele here from the No Name Ever podcast. Just reflecting with a few thoughts from the United game and obviously the disappointing loss. I think first and foremost from the game, me personally, I think there's more positives to take from negatives. Yeah, we know Man United aren't the, the United they once were and you know they've had a few issues at the start of the season and the team was weaker. But arguably, we dominated a large part um, of that game. Obviously, we had, you know, if you look at the stats, you know, we dominated on possession, XG, shots on goal, shots off goal, and and whatnot. And obviously, the one stat that matters is the one that goes in the back of the net. But overall, you know, you 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 know, you can take positives from that. You know, it's still a team that you know came third in the Premier League last year, and in my opinion, once they get over this little hurdle, you know, they'll still come in the top six minimum. So that was a positive. Negatives for me are, it's just second half was that little bit of a lack of a cutting edge. There was a lot of nice football, a lot of passing around at the back, which got a little bit frustrating. And, you know, United did defend well, to be fair to them. You know, they got in a good shape and they made it difficult for us. But ultimately, we didn't really look like scoring. You know, there's a few little opportunities here and there. Brun Larson, I thought, did well when he come on, put a good cross into the box. I think there was a ball over to him, which he couldn't quite control. Jay had a chance. And I think the lack of a real quality striker really cost us in that game. You you, know, you can never say ever in, in football. But I think if Foster did play, I think he would have challenged Evans and Lindelof more and definitely give us another dimension. And, you know, football's a cruel game, isn't it? You know, we, we were playing really well. I'm doing a hit the post. Um, and then, you know, right before half time, obviously Fernandez scores an absolute worldly goal. You can look at, you know, the critiquing part of it. You know, maybe Bayer lost his man a little bit. We could have closed the goal down at source by pressing Evans a little bit better. But ultimately, we were in quite a good shape. And it's frustrating, really, because you look at the last three games where it's, you know, Spurs, one all, the Mervo scores a worldie. Winning at Forest, hudson Adoy scores a worldie. And then Fernandez scored, obviously, that great volley, which to me was the best out of the lot in terms of the technique, the ball coming over your shoulder. And sometimes in close games in the Premier League, that's what these top players can do. Ultimately, you know, the lads in our lineup are anywhere from 5 to 15, maybe touching 20 million. You know, and they've got Fernandez there, who's probably worth, you know, minimum 100 million if, uh, you know, say a Real Madrid was going to sign him. So it's kind of so close yet so far. But ultimately, we sit on one point from five games. Um, the first three games. We was largely not in the contests, but the last two have, have given me a lot more hope and a lot more promise. I think Taylor and Brownell coming into the side has been a bonus. We look a lot more solid from the back. I think Trafford, albeit isn't the finished article, um, he's starting to look better. Ramsey, I thought was superb. Um, you know, I, thought, I was surprised to see him on the starting lineup, not because he's not a good player. I just thought Burge probably would have played in that position, but. Ramsey was superb, you know, I think he's going to be a great player for us. So, there is many positives. Um, some negatives are, again, what I mentioned about a little bit laboured at the back, still giving the ball away. I thought Robert struggled first half. We was quite lucky, not in terms of the offside, but that it was offside. You know, Roberts gave the ball away and that's going to be my next um, area for improvement. Is our set pieces are woeful at both ends. Every time a team takes a corner against us, we look like conceding. Yeah, it doesn't help that we've not got the biggest team, but our setup looks strange. You know, Trafford had no protection at all our game, and then our set pieces, whether we went into the box or short, were dreadful. And you know, set pieces are such a key part of the game, and we never look like scoring. You know, you've seen again. I know it's different; they've got a tarky, but you know, which is a frustrating one. But Everton, obviously, you no know, scored kind of two from set pieces, one a second phase, and one straight from a corner, and you know, two other three goals. So, like I said Newcastle away. 
you know, we watched them against Sheffield United yesterday. I thought it would have been a close game, that one. And Newcastle just blew them away. So, again, it's another good marker for us, I think. If we can go there and really put in a good performance and try and get something, it'll be a real boost. But then you look at the fixtures to come, you know, the next five or six games after Newcastle, and they're going to be crucial. I think after those fixtures kind of finish, give a good idea of where we're going to be in that looting game. You don't like to say must win, you know, after, because that'll be the seventh game of the season, but it's got a feel of that, hasn't it? So, there's, there, to me, there's more positives than negatives. And I think, you know, you look look back at the start of last season, you know, it took us a while to really click, to really gel. You know, in the Championship, we were drawing games rather than losing, but in the Premier League, you, you get punished and it's not as hard to break teams down. Teams don't make the same mistake. So, for me, it's onwards and upwards. Keep going, keep supporting the team as we always do. Um, I, I still personally think we're going to be better than three teams. You know, we're better than Luton and, and Sheffield United. Obviously, we've got to prove we're better than Luton by beating it. I think there's always Everton, Bournemouth and Wolves are, are at a similar level. But I think we do have that sprinkling of quality. And when it does click, I think we'll get some good wins on the board. So that's a quick review and a quick summary for me. Obviously, we've got Salford on Tuesday night in the Cup. Presume he'll play um, a rotated team. So it'll be good to give players opportunities and hopefully get through to the, you know, to the next round and have a good cup run. And then, like I said, it's going to be a tough um, test against Newcastle. But fingers crossed we can, you know, we can bring uh, our A game to that. See you later, listeners. Good evening. And, well, whatever time of day you listen to this, no, 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 podcast listeners. Uh, I think on this show you're probably going to hear some quite measured, quite balanced, quite sort of um, glass half full positive takes from a lot of the, uh, the panellists. So I'd like to think that I'm going to bring a little bit of <laughs> balance to that. Um, I'm feeling pretty downbeat after after the Man United result. Um, the Forest performance I thought was a massive improvement. Um, I was a little bit worried that company was going to be quite stubborn and not learn the lessons from the Spurs game, but the changes that he made, obviously bringing in Brown Hill and Taylor, we looked a lot more solid. And to be fair as well for the you know for the majority of the Man United game, we looked a lot more solid as well. They didn't. You know they weren't going through as at will as we've seen in, in previous games, but part of that was maybe because they were happy to let us have the ball, and I think that probably brings me on to why I've come away from that game a little bit more worried than than I started. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, do you think Burnley will stay up this season? Uh, you know, people at work and things like that, and I was I've always been pretty confident because we've got goals in the team, is what I've said. You know, we look like we're going to score every game. Now, I appreciate Foster was suspended for the Man United game, but what was really alarming for me was the second half performance. The first half, I thought we were really good. I'm doing had the header saved, and obviously the, the one that's hit the post is unlucky, and it could have gone back anywhere, and it's, it's unluckily just gone to the defender and not gone back to Collier here for a tapping. Um, we've conceded the goal, obviously, right on half time. Um, I, I must have been out plucked up the courage to watch it back yet but in real time I thought we should have defended it probably a little bit better I don't think there's any need to whinge about not putting pressure on Johnny Evans because you're not expecting him to pull that pass out but for me and like I say maybe when I see it back I'll, I'll be wrong but I think they uh, you're just criminal to let a ball go over your head like that in the penalty area so his position is not the best and I think Taylor should just be a little bit more you know leaning on Fernandez a little bit just not letting him have the time and space to, to, to take the shot Appreciate obviously it's a fantastic ball and a, and a, and a fantastic finish as well. Um, but then the second half it really worried me. I have to say we were just so pedestrian, so one paced. There, were, there was just absolutely zero urgency. Uh, you know, Man United just sat back, um, rigid, tight formation, and said, you know, try and break us down, and we never even looked close like we were going to do it. Um, it was just so frustrating to watch in the stands, you know. Might just how many times can you watch Bayer sideways pass to Alakia or back to Trafford? How many times did he win it in midfield, put our foot on it and look backwards, just keep possession instead of just you know, maybe there's nothing wrong with just playing a long ball forward. If you're not gonna win the first header, you know, go for the second ball, just get it up the pitch. You know, I appreciate that the way that we're playing is patient build up passing, but there comes a time when you've got to take more risk, you've got to be a bit more you just need more thrust and it was just so frustrating to watch because the way we were playing it was just playing right into Man United's hands 
you can see it in the in the interview after the game. Fernandez is praising the way we play. How many times did we used to laugh when you know think of David Luiz whinging about anti football? We used to love that because it was like, yes, we've not played the exact way you want us to. We've not given you time. We've not given you space. We've made it difficult for you, and we've got a result. It just felt like the absolute antithesis of that. It was just playing safe football, boring football, uh, playing right into what Man United wanted us to do, and it just made winning that game so easy for them in the second half. And it's why I felt a bit worried because it, it, it felt to me like we're finding new ways to lose games. You know, there's that saying of finding ways to win games, but it, you know, that was a completely different defeat. It was we lost that game because we didn't have goals in there. We didn't have enough attacking threat. I think as I'm saying all this, you know, I'm thinking about the options we've got and defensively, we've much improved. That's fair. To, that's plain to see. That's fair to say. I think Brian Hill does improve the team in that regard. I think he should have come off probably sooner in, in that game last night. Or I'm recording this on Sunday night, I should say. He should have come off sooner on Saturday because uh, I just don't think he's got enough quality in the final third. Um, so when you're sort of pressing for a winner, it's he, he, with the options we've got on the bench, one of them is better to bring on. I thought he'd waited too long to make the subs. I think you could see Amdouni and, and Kaliosha were, were flagging after sort of you know, after after the hour mark, he waited too long to make those changes. Company, um, the opposite related to the Spurs game. You know, he made those changes at half time and we came out worse. And and the problem was probably not making the changes quickly enough in in this one. Um, Benson and Zorori, you know, Zorori not coming on at all. Benson only in ten minutes. I think I'd be quite frustrated if I was both of them. But of all the players, you know, in last season's team that you thought we need upgrades for these, that, you know, they'd have been quite a, a long way down people's list. Sort of thought. And yet, you know, we're still just with sort of the same options that we had at fullback last year. Well, less actually because Matson's gone, so no improvement there. The same options in the middle of midfield really, apart from Birch. We're not seeing anything from uh, Mis- uh, is it Misengo, the chap from Bristol City. We're not seeing anything of him yet. Um, I thought Birch was good when he came on, but again, he's he's a number ten, isn't he? He's not really a, a holding midfielder or a sitting midfielder in the way that Colin and Brownhill are. And yet, we've bought in all these wingers. Um, you know, deadline day we're bringing in another one, and uh, I hear everyone raves about Trezor. I, I don't know anything about him from from prior, and you know what can go off. What I've seen him, of him so far in the Burnley shirt, I didn't think he was an improvement on anyone we've got. I mean, obviously it's, t- it's too late to to make a judgment, but yeah, if I was Benson Zorori, I'd be wondering why some of these players are coming in and getting minutes ahead. Um, Benson really barely had a look in the Premier League at all, um, and he came on and. You know, his shooting wasn't great, of course, when he came on, but we looked a lot more threatening, a lot more direct with him on the pitch, I thought. And to be fair, Brun Larson as well, I think he was someone who was keen to get it forward and had a bit more urgency and dynamism into that into that attack. So, yeah, you know, a lot of people are saying Man United are, you know, we're playing the top four, top six, top eight teams. Man United will be up there. Yes, I think they will. I think they'll be top six, but if they had that team for the whole season, you know, that back four... It's bang average. The midfield's bang average. You know, McTominay and Hannibal, Casemiro obviously isn't bang average. But I think when you look at that team, it's Casemiro, Rashford, Fernandez, standout players, and then not, nothing else that really makes you worry too much. Anana, we, we know he's in a really bad time at the minute form wise, and we haven't given him that much to, to worry about over the course of the 90 minutes, and certainly not in the second 45. So that worried me. That worried me, and and you see the way the table shaping up. Um, you know, all three promoted teams still without a win to the name. It looks like it's a massive step up at the minute, and it looks like we're finding it difficult to come to terms with that step up. Now, of course, there's the, the usual caveats. The teams we played, I think we've had much more difficult fixtures than Sheffield United and Luton have. We've got the Luton game coming up soon, and that it looks a big one. I was quite glad to see Sheffield United get absolutely battered today, but by the same token, we're playing Newcastle on Saturday, so it makes you worry a little bit about that fixture. How are we going to get on? I think we'd all be delighted with anything there. But say we do lose that, which is likely, then we've got one point from six games, having played four at home. And, you know, you can say, well, Man Man City, you don't expect anything from that. Fine. Villa, Spurs, the good sides. Are the sides where you, you don't think you can get a point at home? I'd say perhaps we could have wished for... Maybe one or two points from those two. Man United at home, that, uh, you know, whatever anyone says, and I think probably people are kidding themselves a little bit that that's a really difficult fixture because of the name of the team, 
because of the badge and not because of the players on the pitch because as you saw from my first half performance we're more than capable of winning that game and I'm a little bit worried that we didn't um, yeah so hopefully a bit of a confidence boost at Salford on Tuesday um, as I said I don't really expect anything from the Newcastle game and it makes the Luton game absolutely massive now if we win the Luton game you know we you imagine that would put a little bit of daylight between us and them and maybe Sheffield United as well um, we get that first one on the board we get a bit of confidence and momentum maybe in Chelsea at home similar to Man United we're not playing the name on the shirt we're not playing the badge we're playing the team and the team at the minute is bang average and we should be looking for three points in that game especially with the start that we've had so if we get six points say from Luton and Chelsea then everything looks rosy but if we don't win at Luton you know then you start to worry don't you because it's like well of course we've had a difficult start but you know, if we're not picking up three points in these games now and by getting nothing out of anything else we're really putting the pressure on these games um, that's not to say that I don't think we're capable of beating Luton and, and I, I would fancy us there I think we have got a better team, better players and I think probably even with the start that we've had we are a, better, a much better side than Sheffield United and Luton and I think we'll be, we'll be finishing well above them it, my worry is are we good enough to catch anybody else I think we've got the players in some positions to do it. The squad's lopsided. The, the, it's not been recruited well for it, I don't think. It's, it's, we're too heavy in certain positions and we're not enough in others. Well, that could be corrected in January. You know, we're just going to hope we're still in with a fight at that point, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, sorry to, sorry to uh, pour in a relentless tide of negativity here, but uh, I have to be honest, I think up till now, whenever, as I say, whenever anyone's asked me, are we going to stay up? I've been pretty confident we are. And I just don't feel quite as confident anymore. Um, but hopefully the other panellists have injected a little bit more positivity into this podcast. And hopefully you come away feeling a bit more uh, optimistic than I do just now. Hi, Adam here to give you some match reaction from the United game on Saturday. Uh, when I saw the team come in, um, maybe slightly surprised that Ramsey had come in and not Burge in the number 10 role. Uh, we am doing it being shifted up front, uh, but I'm oh, happy to see more Ramsey. Um, and yeah, seemed like a, a nice positive move um, and trying to expose some of United's weaknesses that we'd seen from runners into the box in the last few weeks. I uh, thought it were a positive performance, looked to be on the front foot for the, from the off. Uh, showed some good control on the ball in the first half. I thought we built play well with Trafford, Bayer and uh, Alder Keel uh, in the first half. And once we did get it up the pitch through the lines, then um, Ramsey, Amdunio and, uh, and Colly Osho all uh, looked in the mood again and caused United some serious problems in that first half. And I think we were the better side. Um, JBG injury, um, bit of a blow, but I'm excited to see uh, Trezor come on, uh, see what he had to offer. Um, I was very much looking forward to seeing his much heralded uh, set piece delivery. Um, didn't quite pay off or live up to the hype at all, really. Um, concern around defending our own set piece as well. Um, Evans scored way too easily. Obviously, it were rightly disallowed by VAR. Uh, Hoyland offside in front of the keeper. Um, and then, obviously, the sucker punch. Of the goal after we've been so good in the first half and Igly should be should have been ahead. I'm doing he had a couple of chances, a uh, decent save from the header by Anana, but then um obviously the main chance, great bit of play by Ramsey, um playing him in and really at the time I thought it was a sitter. Um probably should be scoring those chances, but for it to come off the inside of the post. Um, yeah, very unfortunate there and would would have deserved to go in front at that point, well on top in the game. But yeah, sucker punch and half time. Slightly you could probably criticize Bayer and Taylor for giving uh Fernandez uh, so much space, but that finish was uh unbelievable, punished us massively. And it's the third time we've conceded a goal uh like that, right on half time. Seems like a concerning pattern, but they're all they're all wonder goals, and we're not going to keep uh, conceding goals like that all season. If we do, then yeah, of course we'll be in trouble. Um, I think an indication of what state Man United are in at the moment is the way that they started the second half and just tried to shut down the game rather than going for a second. 
and it came a bit of a, a frustrating watch, to be honest. Um, Jacob Brun Larson obviously came on, and there were I think there were minimal impact by any of the substitutes really, uh, and I couldn't help but wish I was watching Benson and Zaruri, um attacking like an already booked Dallo and an out of position Val, uh, Varane in the last twenty minutes. Um, I think yeah, we just tried to play through United. It never really worked. The uh, they sat back and just defended what they had. In the end, it's another defeat that's that's not going to define our season. Uh, but losing, uh, like losing against the teams that we haven't already, but that felt like a missed opportunity on uh, on Saturday against a vulnerable United team, and it doesn't half pile the pressure on uh, for the upcoming games. Uh, extra pain for me as well. Who's married to a United season ticket holder, so it's not been uh, not been a fun few days at all. But um, there we go. Uh, still confident that we've got enough onto Newcastle away. What could go wrong, eh? Up the Clarets. The Known and Ever podcast is brought to you in association with the TalkSport Fan Network. Our host and editor is Natalie Bromley, and the show is produced by Matt Moss. Our resident statistician is Dave Roberts, and our FPL expert is Adam Dennett. The analysis show team is collectively Tom Whitaker, Rich Steele, George Poole, Charlotte Rigby and Adam Dennett. Our music is provided by George Gaskell and our newsletter team is headed up by Jamie Smith. If you don't already, you can subscribe to our newsletter by visiting nonenever.substack.com. Thanks as ever go to our partners TalkSport. We are proud to be associated with the TalkSport Fan Network.